This demo is available on Confluent documentation. Here you see the architecture. We're using a local on-premise Kafka cluster with Confluent platform. And on the right side, we use Confluent Cloud, the fully managed service. And here you see how on the left side, we have some data generation, which in the real world would be your data sources. And then we use Confluent Replicator to replicate the data into Confluent Cloud. In Confluent Cloud, we use the data to process it with stream processing using KSQL DB. And also we do data integration with a fully managed connector. In this example, I will show you the AWS S3 connector. So this is a pretty powerful example. Nevertheless, it's very easy to set up. So you can really do this by yourself within 10 minutes or so. You just have to download Confluent Platform, configure Confluent Cloud, and start one script, and that will configure everything for you to see exactly what I will show you now. So I will start with Control Center, which is on-premise, in this case on my laptop. And here we see the on-premise cluster, which is running. So here we have some data generation, which is creating data. You can see this here in Kafka Connect because in this case, as I said before, we are using a data generator. That's by the way, a pretty cool Kafka connector open source, which you can use to generate any kind of data. You just configure it in a file and then it continuously produces the events you want to produce. This is pretty important for testing streaming applications. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So the important part, however, is that the data which we generated on premise is then replicated into Confluent Cloud using Confluent Replicator. So this is running in this case as part of my on-premise on infrastructure and Confluent Replicator is also based on Kafka Connect, leveraging all of its features like high availability, high throughput and so on. So this is running on-premise and we replicate this data to Confluent Cloud. So now I'm in Confluent Cloud and here you see I have one cluster. In this case, it's an um, US West 2. And you already see that I'm consuming and producing data in this cluster. So let's take a look at that. Here you can see that I started this demo around half an hour ago. And so I'm continuously producing data. And in this case, we are getting this data from on-premise via Confluent Replicator, no matter what the data sources on-premise are, because that's separated from the cloud. And then in the cloud, we want to see what we can do with the data. So um, we have different data flows we can take a look at. So this is a, what's already running in the cloud with all the different Kafka topics and stream processing applications. To show you one of these um, topics, so um, this is the page views. So our logic is around page views and users, and then we can do filtering on that. And here is just a, 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 a simple message here, which we can take a look at. So um, it has a value, it has a header, and it has um, keys. So normal Kafka message, right? And the interesting part now is that in the cloud, where we want to process the data, we have already KSQL applications running here. In the same way, of course, you could run any other custom application using Kafka clients like Java or C++ or Python in the cloud. In this case, we use the stream processing framework KSQL DB. And here you see, I already deployed a few of these applications where we have some input Kafka topics like the users and the page views. And then we have some stream processing applications which run continuously. Some of them are stateless and some of them are stateful. And so we can go to streams and to tables to see, see these applications running. And here you also see that they use different um, data formats like Afro or Protobuf or JSON. So that's up to you what you want to use. And I just want to show you one example here of such a KSQL stream. In this case, um, we filter for the female page views. And therefore, it's really a straightforward query um, where the most important part is the where clause, where we say only give me um, the results where the gender is a female. And the important part, this is a stream processing application. This is deployed and continuously running. And this is Kafka native. This is for high throughput, high availability. Um, under the hood, this is using Kafka topics, Kafka replication, partitions, replication factor, and all these things you know. So that's already pretty cool. So we have a hybrid architecture, integrating data from on-premise data sources, replicating them to cloud, and doing stream processing in the cloud, all fully managed. And last but not least now, we can even create fully managed connectors in AWS Cloud now. 
I have already configured an S3 connector for one of the topics. So here you see I have an S3 page views sync connector. And if we take a look at the S3 management console, we see that here we have our bucket for that. And in this bucket, it automatically ingests the data which we create via Kafka. So this is in this case an Afro format. And this is continuously updated. And even this connector from Kafka Connect is fully managed as part of Confluent Cloud. So you don't have to run that. You just configure it. I can show you here, add a new connector, and you see there's a lot of different AWS components. This is sync connectors like Lambda, and also source connectors like Kinesis. And we also, of course, integrate with other systems, like if you use MongoDB on AWS with Atlas, or if you use something like Snowflake or Salesforce. All of them are fully managed. And to show you how this works, you just click on the S3 sync connector like I did in my case. You tell the configuration which topics you want to get the data from. And then when you select the topic, then you have to configure a little bit more of the S3 configuration here. And that's it. Then you deploy it and it's fully managed. And so what I have shown you now in a few minutes is really a very powerful architecture and really simple to set up, but to create really highly scalable streaming architectures between on-premise and the cloud. And as I said before, the on-premise solution could also run on AWS Outpost. So you can also have a fully deployed AWS solution in a hybrid way. So I hope you like this demo. I think it's really great to getting started.